The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the member for raising this matter in the House because it is a matter extremely critical to my constituents and, frankly, all Albertans. Uh, the issue of rail safety is top of mind in Edmonton, Strathcona. Our riding is laced with rail lines, crossings, and terminals, and loading for uh, petrochemicals and for bitumen. And uh, up until about a month ago, uh, tanker cars of bitumen and chemicals sat right within the centre of Edmonton, Strathcona, right in the busiest section of our historic old Strathcona. Much to the delight, Mr. Speaker, of my constituents, to everybody's surprise in the city of Edmonton, Canadian Pacific has announced that they are now considering selling off some of those properties. And I am very pleased because I've been working with city councillors through uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and my constituents in trying to get uh, Canadian Pacific to be thinking seriously about improving the safety for my constituents, let alone the nuisance of having a rush hour traffic backed up. So yes, rail safety is top of mind, but it's not just uh, the issue of inconvenience or the risk to residents. Um, about a decade ago, the largest spill off uh, railroad into fresh water in North America occurred in a lake where for four generations my family have had property at Lake Wabma. And to this day, um, a good portion of that bunker seal and poil oil remains in the bottom of that lake and nobody knows what will happen to it. So there is, of course, heightened concern um, in that Wabam community of residents to monitoring what's going on with train loads, the speeds, the state of the uh, rail lines and the crossings. And I get repeated calls from residents out in that area, very concerned that the inspection is not uh, catching a lot of the concerns out there. I have heard from residents in Slave Lake, Alberta, with concerns that a rail bridge there that was partly burned out is not being maintained. And of course, we witnessed around Christmas time this past year the derailment in Banff National Park, the dumping of hazardous substances into a very important uh, fishery in our national parks. So, yes, rail safety is top of mind to Edmonton Strathcona, but to all Albertans and all Canadians. And of course, Lac Megantic being one of the most recent incredible tragedies. Um, that could have been prevented if we had uh, better measures in place and better enforcement. So, yes, rail safety is a critical issue. We just heard Mr. Speaker from one of the government members that uh, the government, even in its throne speech, said, yes, the federal government is going to take action and they're going to be tabling legislation on rail safety. And yet, it's coming through a private member's bill, which, of course, I guess raises the question, why is the government not coming forward with an omnibus bill with measure many long-awaited measures that the Transportation Safety Board has identified even as recently in the lac Megantic Review. Yes, it is time for the federal government to act because railroads are 100% regulated by the federal government. And my community, as with communities across Canada, live with the frustration of where they are left to try to negotiate with the rail companies to address these kinds of issues including safety issues at rail crossings because the federal government simply has not stepped forward. So yes, we need approved legislation, approved regulation, we need more inspectors, but we also need the federal government to embrace this portfolio more deeply and step forward and work with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities who are trying to address these issues together. Now, Mr. Speaker, in tabling the bill, the member for Winnipeg South Centre suggested that the amendment she has tabled will have passed grant additional powers to the minister to intervene to improve safety at all regulated grade crossings. And she mentions there are 14,000 public crossings and 9,000 private crossings. That's 23,000 crossings. I guess the obvious question there is, can Canadians anticipate that when this legislation comes forward, we're going to have immediately 23,000 crossings addressed? We've heard many members in the House raise concerns. Where is the additional manpower? Um, the amendments are puzzling for a number of reasons. One of the most uh, apparent ones is that the essence of those amendments appear to already be in the Act. And uh, very recently, the government came forward and actually amended the law. And in uh, section four, uh, subsection four, they actually have clarified uh, railway operations are safely operated when there's a, a, a threat to railway operations that impact property and persons and so forth. 
They then later on added uh, subsection 4.1, which says specifically for the purpose of this act, a threat is a hazard or condition that could reasonably be expected to develop in a situation in which a person could be injured or made to be ill or damage could be caused to the environment or property and threat is immediate if such a situation already exists. So I'm left puzzled, Mr. Speaker, in how these proposed amendments are going to fit with these amendments that the government only recently made. I think that it will be useful at committee to take a look at those, see if these amendments are actually needed or if they need to address some of the amendments that the government only recently uh, brought forward. So I think that the sentiment, the intent is good, but I'm puzzled as why, at why these uh, measures need to be added when the government seems to have already previously done that. Of more concern, Mr. Speaker, is at a time when communities are desperately begging the government to give them a greater voice in the kind of rail traffic that is going through their communities at what rate of speed, the length of the train, the type of, of cargo being carried, this bill actually will diminish the rights of concerned communities, property owners, to seek reviews or upgrades where the risks are to health, environment, or property. So it actually gives a power to the minister to ignore the objection and concern. Um, I think a committee would be very important to take a look at the wording there because it doesn't actually enable communities of greater voice. It's going to diminish that power. The powers assigned to the Minister of Transport to issue orders and corrective measures I think are good. There are a lot of those already in the bill. I would recommend, consistent with what most environmental laws now provide, is to immediately assign those powers to inspectors. The field inspectors who are out there, in the community, witnessing uh, where there's a dangerous situation so they can immediately be empowered to take those actions. That is something else I would suggest that the committee take a look at. Um, the Act already empowers the Cabinet to issue regulations for rail crossing safety. I guess the question would be, um, apparently the government has not moved it forward. I look forward to being corrected on that. Otherwise, surely the member would not have felt necessary to come forward with these actual amendments to the statute. That's something else that could be looked at. And finally, um, this is a matter that I look forward to be bringing before this place. Um, I am deeply concerned that one of our major industrial sectors, which is the rail sector, has in the last couple of years increased more than a thousand-fold its shipping of dangerous cargo, including raw bitumen, including petrochemicals, and so forth. And yet this government has not seen fit to amend its Transport Act and its Canadian Environmental Assessment Act to enable that review of that increased traffic of hazardous substances will allow for an environmental impact assessment. Um, I'm deeply puzzled why this growing sector, which uh, the government member before me pointed out, that it is a growing industrial sector, increased traffic, including increased traffic of hazardous substances, and yet the government has not seen, seen fit to amend its laws to make sure that that kind of activity undergoes a proper, at least environmental screening and assessment so that communities that may be impacted could have a voice in that decision making. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this matter of concern to my constituents.